What's up, guys? Simone Fan 101 here. Let me fix this. Uh, I apologize if the lighting looks off. Eh. But I just got a new phone. I'm using my phone camera for recording, at least for now. Um, I may use the laptop camera um, whenever I have the chance to record. But for now, I'm using a phone camera. Now, with that said, I'm going to be doing a complete overhaul of just pay-per-view reviews. Um, for the last um, for the last few months or so, going back to October, I haven't been able to do as many reviews or videos as I would like. Uh, recently, I finished my top 10 favorite video game series of all time, in my opinion, my top 10 best. Um, then I did the Royal Rumble re review because I was always planning on doing the Royal Rumble contest, so I had to review it as soon as possible, which I did. Um, but now I am, I am going back to watching all the old, all the pay-per-views and big shows that I missed, uh, for WWE, NXT, uh, one show for TNA, one show for Ring of Honor, although with 15th anniversary coming up, it's going to be two shows, um, Russell Kingdom, for that's a New Japan show, um, you know, re recapping a little bit of Lucha Underground, although I'll, I'll probably do that whenever I get my weekly show started. Because I'm going to be doing online schooling, and I have no idea how that's going to impact my schedule. So that's going to have to be postponed. I've been wanting to do it. I really have. I really have been wanting to do it, but I just haven't been able to find the time. Uh, Monday, uh, WCPW as well. Um, several big events. Kirby Mania, True Destiny, True Legacy, their iPay-per-views, you know, whatever they got. So, that too. Um, so, with that said, we're going to, this video will be reviewing Hell in a Cell, 2016. I have a list of a lot of, not all of them, but a lot of pay-per-views and shows that I have to record. Um, Hell in a Cell was... It wasn't a bad show, but I you can't help but watch it and feel disappointed by it. The show started off with a... First of all, this overhaul of Hell in a Cell matches is just fucking idiotic. There was three Hell in a Cell matches on this show. The last time we saw three Hell in a Cell matches on a show was... Hell, the first Hell in a Cell pay-per-view back in 2009, which... It goes back, it goes to the reason why I hate that there's a Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. It's October, so let's break out the cell. Hell in a Cell used to be a, a, a match where it was, it, it would, it was created for the feud to be finales of feuds. Or, or, you know, or something to that effect. Under, or maybe even just to be an absolutely fantastic match, sometimes. Um... Like Undertaker versus Shawn Michaels, first ever Hell in a Cell match. Undertaker versus Mankind. Undertaker versus Brock Lesnar. How personal that feud got. Uh, let's see, Triple H, Triple H and Cactus Jack in two thousand. Um, I mean, God, I mean, you know, uh, Triple H versus Shawn Michaels, despite being a very good match, overrated by some people, especially by WWE, I might think. But that that match made sense to happen. Um, Triple H versus Batista, Hell in a Cell worthy, maybe not, but it was meant to end a feud, so at least it did its purpose. Randy Orton Undertaker, you know that had a purpose. Undertaker and Batista, Undertaker and Edge, oh, a lot of those Hell in a Cell, very few Hell in a Cell matches didn't mean anything. A lot of them meant something. And after they made it into a pay-per-view, how many of them actually meant something? I can only think of a few off the top of my head. Um, Undertaker and Brock Lesnar in, two, uh, in 2015. Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose in 2014. You could make the argument for John Cena and Randy Orton back in 2009, but that's about it. CM Punk versus Undertaker? No. DX versus Legacy? No. So, and 
and this show was the second time they did three Hell in a Cell matches on the sh on the show. I'm not saying none of them were bad matches. Um, in fact, the opening match, which was Roman Reigns and Rusev, was uh, it was a solid match. Honestly, I honestly with a match like this, you have to put Reigns in there with someone who he either has good chemistry with or could really carry him to the best of his ability. For instance, the match he had with Bray Wyatt inside of Hell in a Cell the year prior in 2015 was a great match. In fact, that was the second best match on the card that year. But to, but the the Rusev Reigns match, they really needed a street fight instead of a Hell in a Cell, which because they ended up using weapons anyway. Hell, in all three of the matches they ended up using weapons. I not often back in the day did you see Hell in a Cell matches with weapons. You saw in Triple H and Kevin Nash, but then again, it's Kevin Nash. And this is Triple H in 2003 when he was at his worst. Um, But with... Oh my God. Let, let's just get on with the show. So Rusev and Roman Reigns had a match. It was it was okay. It was solid. But it wasn't the greatest. Um, it had a There was a couple things that were cool about it, like use of the steel steps and a couple of spots here and there. But for the most part, it was just a solid match. Roman Reigns won with, I guess what you would call a super spear. Ro Rusev was on the top of the stairs and Roman Reigns, what happened was he speared him on, while Rusev was on top of the spare, stairs and went a little bit of a distance to the, to the mat. Pinned him one, two, three. Roman Reigns retained the United States Championship. Now keep in mind, I'm recording this video in February. Looking back, man. Ru okay, first of all, Roman Reigns holding the U.S. title was fucking pointless. And Rusev, lose, uh, in, in the lost whatever momentum he may have had left with Roman Reigns. I thought, Roman, I got to hand it to Rusev. He was fighting back a little bit um, after the whole... You know, after him losing to John Cena and the whole Dolph Ziggler, Lana, Summer Rae debacle of 2015, he was fighting back. He was getting some momentum back. But no. he. he but then he feuded with Roman Reigns, and it all went downhill from there. I mean, Rusev beat the shit out of Kalisto at a, at a pay-per-view. I think it was Extreme Rules. Um... Even though he was facing, you know, lower card talent, Rusev himself was on a roll. But he needed to face someone bigger. And they, they thought, okay, we'll put in Roman Reigns. Have Roman Reigns go for the U.S. title. Give him a break from the main event scene. Much of a break that would have been. Ben, it only happened for a couple of months before Roman Reigns was back in the title picture. And what, what, if it, what, did, it, what did the feud overall do for Rusev? It did absolutely nothing. And look where he is now. Look where he is now. He is teaming with Jinder Mahal. That is just retarded. The match itself was decent enough. It, saw, it was solid enough. But man, looking back, it just... It was the wrong call for... Ru At least the way they handled Rusev in the feud with the whole... Uh, with Roman Reigns essentially being a bad guy. <laughs> People tend to forget that Roman Reigns was kind of a douchebag. And Rusev... He may have been cocky, but he wasn't being a complete asshole. Um, Roman Reigns was more of an asshole. Next match we had Bailey and oh my god, Bailey and Dana Brooke. Man, I did not like this. This match was mediocre as fuck. This match was it was a bad match. Let me put it this way. Bailey did all she could do with Dana Brooke, but this is Dana Brooke we're talking about, who would have benefited from having a few more, a couple more years down in developmental in NXT. Dana Brooke sucks. Why is she even on the main roster? I'm glad she's not on my, she's not hasn't been wrestling on my TV. But other than that, um, it was just, it's just ridiculous that. The, let's, let's face it, the only reason why Dana Brooke is on the main roster is because Vince McMahon looked at her, saw his saw her physique, and it's like, put her on the main roster. I want her on my main roster now. Stupid. 
Anyways, um, the match itself was not that good. It really wasn't. Dana Brooke was botching at, at several points. This is the, remember this is the same woman who botched putting Charlotte's rope, Charlotte's rope, Charlotte's feet on the rope, and instead kind of touched the rope and put her foot under the rope. Who messes something up like that? Dana Brooke, that's who. Dana Brooke is a fucking train wreck. Bailey, I'm glad. This could have been an absolute pile of dog shit. It wasn't that bad. Because she was in there with Bailey. But, with that said, this match was still not good. This match sucked. Bailey thankfully won with a Bailey to Belly. And that was the end of that. And let's hope we never see Dana Brooke ever again. Speaking of a match that, looking back, didn't do not that much. We had Big Cass and Enzo Amore versus Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows, the club, the tag team. Well, um, this match was this match was okay. It wasn't a bad match. I will. Say. It was not a bad match. I will say that it was not a bad match. It was. It was. It was okay. Uh, Anderson and Gallows got the win, but is it? But it, it is. I can't really name any like spots in this match because this that, that's what it was. It was just an okay match, and we've seen since then Enzo Amore in singles matches. Enzo Amore should never ever ever be a singles wrestler, and the day that he breaks up with Cass, or the day that. Um, Cass becomes a big single star. Enzo Amore should not be his tag team partner. And he, he should not be a standalone singles guy because he's not that good in the ring at all. Enzo Amore needs to stick to the mic and that's it. It's all he needs to do. Uh, what I can take him with tag team matches with, Ru- with, with, Rusev, with Big Cass. But uh, it just just don't have him in singles match. I said Rusev just now. That's another... Just going back to the other thing. That's the other thing that killed Rusev. The whole feud with with Enzo Amore. How ri- ridiculously retarded that was. Uh, the next match on the card... Now, I could be getting my results switched around. So that's why I'm going to switch them around myself. For some, next, I have Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins. However, when I... I and I did rewatch the show, by the way. When I rewatched it... Um, Instead, it was TJ Perkins and Brian Kendrick. So I'll just go with that match first. Um, I could be wrong, in fact. But who, who gives a damn? TJ Perkins and Brian Kendrick. TJ Perkins was defending the Cruiserweight Championship against Brian against the Brian Kendrick in, um, at, in the Cruiserweight title match. This match, I remember... I, I, do, I do know that this match got a little bit of time. There was a big problem with this match that's been a problem since the cruiserweight division started, and hopeful, and I think it's actually getting better. But it's but, but it was a problem since the the division started, and that was the fact that a lot of these cruiserweight matches they don't feel like cruiserweight matches; they feel like WWE matches, and that's not what these guys are supposed to be about. I get why they don't want to, but. If you're going to have a cruiserweight division, allow them to work their own style, their own cruiserweight style. That's what made them work. That's what brought them to the dance. Let them use it. In the cruiserweight classic, Brian Kendrick and TJ Perkins were having some pretty freaking great matches. Brian Kendrick with Kota Ibushi, TJ Perkins with Ibushi, with Graham Metalik, with Johnny Gargano. So... But that, so you have to keep that in mind. Let let them bring them to the dance. I I I think they're getting better at that. Honestly, they are getting a little better with that, especially with Neville on the scene and Akira Tozawa. Grand Metalik just came in. Tajiri, I believe, came back, or maybe not. He, he, I don't I don't know what the what's the deal with Tajiri. I really don't know. Um, but it's just I don't I don't really know. They, they, hopefully, they're getting better. I will say that. They're getting better. They're getting more guys, you know, in the division that makes sense. Uh, all they're really missing is Kalisto, and he's on SmackDown. Um, but, uh, 
you know, other than that, you know, they're they're trying to make the cruiserweight division feel a little bit important, or should I say, Triple H's, because you Vince McMahon has never been a fan of the cruiserweights. Just look at the way the cruiserweights were were treated back when they first started it, back in 2000, 2001, 2002. Um, and, and look who was the last champion. The last champion was Hornswoggle, and then they vacated it from Hornswoggle, and they never brought it back on TV again. That's how much they didn't care. So hopefully they're giving it more care. They brought a new cool-looking title belt. This match, however, the ma- this match goes to the reason why some people probably don't like it, is because... It felt like a WWE match when it should have been a Cruiserweight match. This match wasn't bad. It wasn't a bad match, but it was only solid because these guys were capable of so much more and it felt like they were holding back. Brian Kendrick won the title after he feigned an injury. TJ Perkins tried to help because, remember, there was supposed to be history between Kendrick and Perkins. And um, Kendrick turned heel and, you know, played on Perkins' uh, past friendship. And then he, pray, he prayed on that and then hit him and then, and got him with the bully choke, which, you know, it, it should, it, they call it the captain's hook. I prefer the bully choke. And Kendrick and uh, Perkins tapped out and Kendrick was your new cruiserweight champion. Uh, he, yeah, he was your new cruiserweight champion and he was for a few, a couple of months. At least he had a couple month title run. Um, after that, we had Kevin Owens versus Seth Rollins. Best match on the show. Great match. Not as great as Kevin Owens and Roman Reigns, although I already talked about that in my Royal Rumble review. Um, but still a great match. Uh, they u- made the use of tables. I love the spot where, Ro- where uh, Seth Rollins powerbombed Kevin Owens through two tables. And it was set up uniquely as well. Chris Jericho, I, I think the ref uh, had a rough bump. And Chris Jericho came down and interfered. Um, made sure Seth Rollins did not win the title. That's the only dark spot of this match. I, I love the Kevin Owens Chris Jericho team up, but the Chris but the Kevin Owens we've been seeing for the past couple weeks now since he betrayed Chris Jericho is really awesome. Looking back, it's just sad that it was it wasn't just a straight up match. The monster Kevin Owens, the evil bastard Kevin Owens, not the chicken shit Kevin Owens. Not saying he doesn't play a great chicken shit, but Kevin Owens should be booked a lot, booked a lot better. Um, but with that said, this was still a really good match. Um, I had a lot of, I had a lot of fun watching it. Again, it was, you know, it was a lot of fun to watch again. Uh, I just hope that Seth Rollins comes back, comes back from injury and fights Triple H again. Uh, hopefully these two, hopefully these two will have better matches in the future if they do have any other matches in the future. It won't be marred by Chris Jericho run-ins. Because let's face it, a lot of the matches were marred by Chris Jericho run-ins. I love Chris Jericho, but come on. It was, it was ridiculous after a while. Speaking of, and Kevin Owens retained the title. And speaking of ridiculous, New Day came in. New Day versus Cesaro and Sheamus. And this was, and looking back, this was around the time when New Day really should have dropped the titles to Anderson and Gallows at the previous. It was at Clash of Champions the, the month before in September. Anderson and Gallows should have won the titles there, or at least the night after when New Day reached 400 days. But instead, even as a face tag team, um, New Day would still attack unfairly whoever their opponents would be, whether they were here or heel or faces. If Xavier was not, if Xavier was wrestling, if Kofi was res- wrestling, the other would interfere. Even if it was a face, even if they, they were facing a face tag team like Cesaro and Sheamus. Um, again, like with a couple of their matches on the other, on the show, this was a solid match. They tried, but uh, I, there was something wrong about it. If the, the match felt off to me. I love um I love Cesaro, but this is just not the role for him. That's why when I I like I love the way I li- I like I do like his tag team with Sheamus, but again, this is not the role for him. He should have um been drafted to SmackDown where he probably would be in a higher spot than he is on Raw. Cuz let's face it, 
Raw is Vince McMahon's baby. SmackDown is kind of like the second show, so he lets somebody else handle that. Which is why SmackDown, in my opinion, is so much better than Raw. Because people on SmackDown know what the fuck they're doing, and they don't have Vince McMahon constantly down their throats about it. They gave him a little bit of leeway. So Cesaro and Sheamus definitely should would have benefited from that, especially Cesaro. Sheamus maybe, but Cesaro, yeah, definitely. Um, that being said, this this match was solid. It was okay. Um, the finish was that Cesaro hit uh Biggie, and this was back when Cesaro Sheamus was still playing half babyface, half heel kind of thing. Sheamus hits um hit Big E with a trombone while Cesaro had Xavier in a sharpshooter. Big E tried to he tried Big E tried to interfere. Cesaro pulled him out, hit him with a trombone. Kofi Kingston hit who was not wrestling in the match, hit Sheamus with the trouble in paradise. Referee saw this. He didn't see the trombone hit, but he saw Kofi attack Sheamus. So Cesaro and Sheamus won by DQ. And it was really at around this time when the New Day really should have lost the titles. I mean, this was, this, the, their title reign, it hurt Anderson and Gallows beyond repair. And to an extent hurt Cesaro and Sheamus. Just so that way they could break Demolition's record. They're doing the same thing with Charlotte in the pay-per-view streak. And that's pissing a lot of people off because in less than a year, the title has changed eight times. And it's probably going to change a ninth time tomorrow night as of recording this. Because tomorrow night's fast lane. As of recording this, tomorrow night's fast lane. And Charlotte is going to win the title back for title win number five. She's going to be a five-time women's champion. They're trying to do the Charlotte... They're trying to make Charlotte into a 16-time women's champion. I can guarantee you that. This pay-per-view streak has to end now. Sorry to go off on a tangent there. Speaking of which, I will get to that. Um, oh, perfect timing. Because the next match happened to be Charlotte going up against Sasha Banks. Sasha Banks was the WWE Women's Champion going into the match. She won the title for a second time on Raw. I can understand why Charlotte won the title back at SummerSlam. Because apparently from what I heard, Sasha Banks was hurt. And voluntarily dropped the title to Charlotte. So that makes sense. At Hell in a Cell, Char Sasha Banks won the title after Clash of Champions on Raw. So the obvious the obvious choice was, okay, Charlotte and, Sa and Sasha are going to end this thing inside Hell in a Cell. That's what's going to happen. And then hopefully the slow heel turn towards WrestleMania will work. Um... And it'll be a singles match between Sasha and Bailey. That that I that's what I would have done. Instead, what ended up happening was Charlotte beat Sasha Banks in this match. She beat her and won the women's championship. It was a great and admittedly, yes, it was a great match. The match started not well, not exactly the bell didn't ring, but the, before the match started, Sar Charlotte and Sasha attacked each other. Or, um, while the cage was being set down. Um, and they attacked each other. They climbed up the, the cell. At one point, and Charlotte hit a powerbomb um, hit on Sasha Banks through the announce table. This would play into the finish and later, and basically throughout the match, as, they, as Sasha would have a kayfabe back injury. She would be selling a back injury. Um, it was a great match, admittedly. Um, they teased Sasha being carried out on a stretcher like they did with Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania 30. She would have none of that shit. And they fought into a great match. It was a great match, admittedly. But so, there were two spots in particular. There were a few spots I actually liked, though. I liked when, when Sasha did the frog splash in the same vein as Eddie Guerrero. I liked how she did the... The knees to the corner instead of and, 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 yeah. <coughs> I hate it when that happens. Instead of the corner of the ring, like the turnbuckle, it was the cage. That was pretty cool. Um, um I, 
I liked several things here. It was a really good match. It was a great match. But the table spots were just not good. There were Charlotte was supposed to fall through a table. She fell on the table. A tiny part of it broke. And um when I watched that, like Char the the tape the table still could have been broken through just a little bit. It was still tight and kind of propped up, but not too much. What I would have done if I were Charlotte, I would have called an audible and have Charlotte have Sasha, I mean. Uh, go do the double knees through the table onto Charlotte. That would have been a cool spot. They didn't do that. Later, they did some other moves. They brought another table through the ring, teasing a power bomb and a moonsault through the table. Um, then Charlotte brought the table to the other side of the ring. But, and this finish was just weird. So Charlotte throws Sasha Banks, who's a small, who's a small, small girl. She's tiny. The only one who's smaller than her is Alexa Bliss, and um, so but Sasha Banks, she's not a big girl, so Charlotte tries to throw Sasha. She throws Sasha onto the table, and then Dude does it again. I I guess what they were trying to do, they were trying to throw her through the table, but Sasha Banks isn't the kind of person to do that with. Look how look at her, look at her, realistically look at her. She would not go through a table if you do something like that. You have to do a move. But they didn't. But they didn't do that. And then Charlotte hit the natural selection and then got the win for the title. A great match, but a weak as hell finish. At least Kevin Owens and Chris and uh, Seth Rollins, their finish wasn't exactly weak. Because Kevin Owens picked Seth Rollins up for a power bomb, got the two, and then power bombed him through two steel chairs. That was not a weak finish. This was. So great match. I'm glad the women main evented a pay-per-view for the very first time, but come on. It's it's not going to happen. It's not, it wasn't, I'm not, why, why am I thinking not going to happen? I'm thinking of something else. I'm thinking of something, sorry. But it's, it just, it felt flat. My thoughts on the pay-per-view overall. It was a, with two great matches, I can't call this a bad pay-per-view, but it's a pay-per-view that, didn't have a lot of luster to it, especially since it was hell in a cell. It just didn't, it wasn't right. So with that said, uh, decent show. Check out the great matches, but uh, go in for a warm that you're going to see some. And, oh, and I'm probably giving it the benefit of the doubt because I know there's some people out there who really did, who did not like Roman Reigns and Rusev, who thought it was, People who probably didn't like the tag team match with Anderson, Gallows, and Enzo and Cass. And probably people out there who didn't like the other two Hell in a Cell matches as much as I did. Although I don't think anybody will complain about Rollins and Owens. I haven't heard too many people complain about that. But I've heard people, people complain about the main event. So with that said, decent show. Check it out. But it's not the greatest show ever. Um... So next time, as when I record, I will be recording for. I'll be going. I'll be doing it in this order. I'll be doing WWE pay per views, Hell in Cell, Survivor Series, TLC, and whatnot going on up until the current day. Then I'll do the NXT shows, which is only two: Takeover Toronto and San Antonio. Then I'll be doing TNA, the TNA shows, which is only one show, one night only, from last January, from this past January, last month, or. Actually, Jan actually January two months ago, I should say. We're in March now. Uh, then Ring of Honor with um, Final Battle and 15th Anniversary. Then Wrestle Kingdom. Then um, or I might go to Wrestle Kingdom first, and then Ring of Honor, and see, and then all the WCPW shows. So until then, next time. Until then, I'll see you next time, guys. Have a good day. Peace. And hopefully you enjoyed this review.